morning. Um, I'm sitting out here in my little backwoods camp again. Uh, and it, it rained really good last night, so I don't quite have the fire that I was trying to make this morning, but uh, nonetheless, I've got one that's pretty well established. So today's, uh, we're going to just make a little breakfast for myself. Um, it, it too is a little different than I originally planned for it to be. My wife got called in to, to work this morning a little bit, so um, as I was going to make a meal for the both of us, it's uh, kind of reducing it down just to for myself. But uh, so let me uh, let me explain here a second. Um, um, me and Bob, Bob eight hundred eight night. We were talking. Uh, I don't know, about two weeks ago, I guess it was now, um, about cooking food directly out of a can. And uh, you know, at the time uh, he had a a pretty good fire going for his and. The discussion was going for cooking directly over flame or uh, extremely hot coals for uh, in, inside the can. And uh, he was mentioning how he didn't really trust doing that so much for, for toxins in the can liner and stuff uh, leaching into the food. And all that makes uh, perfectly good sense. I probably wouldn't want to do it myself either unless it was really desperate times. But uh, so that, dis that discussion turned into uh, um, some, some things I learned from my dad way back in the 1970s uh, in Fort Benning, Georgia when I was in Cub Scouts. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, it's, it's still cooking in the can but not necessarily directly over hot flames. And uh, let me reestablish my fire here for a few minutes. The uh, Everything is soaking wet. I'm having a, I'm having a, a bit of a time keeping it up to temperature but uh, so that's what we're going to do um, initially my breakfast is going to be um, some corned beef hash and some fried eggs for for both myself and and, and my wife who has now um, bailed on me so we're still going to do the corned beef hash part of it um, and just going to forego the eggs uh, seeing as the the whole can will, will do me for, for a little while now this morning and uh, we'll, we'll get to talking about that a little bit more in just a moment. Okay, so um, you're probably not seeing me very well, but yeah, there's probably nothing wrong with that either. Um, what we're going to do this morning, I've got a got a little bit of water going for some tea for me, but uh, I'm going to show you how my dad um, taught me to to do some quick stuff, easy camping, no really no big mess, uh, easy super duper cleanup, and and so forth. Um, back when I was a kid in the Scouts in the 70s, so. What I'm gonna do, sorry, Let's use my big pot. And I've got a little bit of overkill going here. I was not intended to using the big grill. Um, I was wanting to use my little backpackable. Uh, my little backpackable. Expedition research grill, um, but this will work. It's just going to be a lot slower. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to just heat up some water. Um, I've got a can of Kroger brand corned beef hash, uh, which we're going to pull the label off of. And just boil the can. Um, you don't have to use a tremendous amount of water. 
I like to kind of bring it up to, you know, like about halfway up the can. Um, and just let, let the can roll around and uh, the boiling water. Um, the, the water is only going to get as hot as 212 degrees because that's boiling point. So I don't think um, any, anything within the can liner itself is going to, to be of a problem for the food. Um, none of that stuff was ever discussed with me when I was a kid, so this part is just all my own personal opinion. Um, take it for what that is, but when uh, when they when they process the food, you know it's it's well in uh, excess of 250 degrees, maybe a little bit more, uh, when they can it in the first place. And if if they can can it at that temperature, then I don't see where there's harm in cooking it 40 degrees less. You know, that, that's what I'm trying to say. So. Um, until it gets hot anyhow, no sense in, in wasting that. But what I'm gonna do is just just let this cook um, in, in some boiling water. So once, once you get it up to temperature, it's not gonna take you long, 10 minutes, uh, maybe 15 at the most, you know, depending on, there's not really a good way of, of determining. Don't let the can swell, um, but uh, that's that. Don't throw your water away, it's actually good good water for a cleanup, whatever cleanup you might have if you're using plates and plates and such, um, which we would have done this morning had my wife stayed here. Uh, we just would have separated it up, you know, give her a quarter of a can and myself three quarters. Um, but then there would have been a couple plates to have uh, dirtied up and that water would have been good for uh, cleanup purposes. I'm not going to go to all that much trouble. I'm just going to eat it directly out of the can. The only uh, other piece of advice I've got for that is be careful when you're opening the can because uh, as things uh, heat it up and um, uh, inside there's going to be a little bit of pressure for, that the juices in the corned beef hash have. And so you just aim it away from you so you don't get sprayed when you first pop, pop the can open. After that, I've, I've never had a bit of problem. Um, I've never worried, uh, really, I never considered it. It was never a discussion before. So, Bob, I thank you for making me think about that. I do think, though, um, just cooking it this way, uh, that there's nothing to really worry about. Uh, like I said, it's, uh, it's, you're eating it at a, a far less temperature, and you've heated it up at, to, a, to a lower temperature than than they ever did at the factory when they canned it. So I th as far as that goes, I think you'll be okay. I, I will definitely agree with you uh, over top of an open flame. Um, putting the can directly into coals and heating it up that way, um, there, there's a far greater chance of whatever is in the can liner uh, being a problem to you. But I think just boiling the can, um, you'd be safe. I don't think I would try that so much with the tomatoes. Maybe the same same science will be okay. You know, they get that that whiter Teflon coated liner and stuff, and that'd be. I know absolutely nothing about that, so I don't want to comment a whole lot. But if I was Larry, it would be with like tomatoes and the acidy things. So, um, I've rattled quite a bit, and uh, I'm going to just turn the camera off for now until. My fire starts producing something. Um, I started off with, a, all I had that was dry was a, I had a pretty good sized sassafras log and cut out the middle of it and whittled it down and then little burnable strips, which is all great. You know, sassafras is great for starting a fire. Um, it's not doing real good on producing coals though. So as it, as it depletes itself, I'm, you're wound up with a little airy piece of coal and I'm not able to sustain a good fire. So I've, I've been trying to dry out some wood along the side of the fire bank here um, of, of different species and varieties. So if, right now the, the maple and walnut pieces is, are, are taking hold pretty well. So I think, 
I think breakfast might turn into lunch for me, but nonetheless, we'll be turning the camera on here soon when it's ready to demonstrate more. See, just, just roll it around every now and then as the water's heating up. I might get my tea someday. And it's darkening up again. Yeah, that's awful high away from the flame there. To get heat fast, but it's getting there. I might get some tea. Okay, so let's see how we're let's see how we're doing here. It keeps clouding up and getting darker, like uh, like it might rain closer to this afternoon instead of this evening. But we're we're getting there. So I think my tea. Ooh, sorry, I'm gonna move that. I've been waiting for that. Anyhow, the uh, <laughs> yeah, it just came to a boil, and I'm gonna let just seep for a few minutes. The uh, Okay, so I'm just going to let that water around in there, and it's uh, 25 after 10, so I'm going to check on it here about 35 after, and uh, periodically just roll it around a, a time or two. Yeah, it was kind of an accident. I seen them yesterday, and I should have protected them better, but uh, looks like I stomped Probably the best trillium I've seen so far this year. But, I'm sorry, I got the camera off the tripod, so I'm going to spin this around just a little bit. And, oh, I cleaned, uh, cleaned this up earlier. This is all uh, freshly raked over stuff from last fall. So I got quite a few little trilliums coming up here. And... Uh, bear with me, I'll probably edit this part of it out, just so no motion sickness, but... And... Quite a few little trilliums coming up over here, so... Looks like the trilliums are going to do good this year. Okay, I'm going to... Just gonna pull this off to the side over here. It has been um, at 15 minutes, I guess. I've rolled it around several times uh, in the meantime. And just gonna let that sit there for just a second. And uh, we'll pop it open and uh, give it all a try. Uh, I know, and you think I'm going to reach down in there, don't you? Um, okay, so um, I'm pretty 
pretty confident that it's all right. Well, let me hold on to it better. That that's all done, I'm going to set that right there. And... Bear with me if this looks really uncoordinated and awkward. I am a lefty, or a semi-ambidextrous lefty, living in righty's world, so this might look a little uncoordinated, but... I'm going to come up that with Fahari when I was trying to cook things. Alright. See? Told you it's going to squirt. But. I really miss the old Army P-38s that came with the C-rations, but I guess my Leatherman can opener will work good enough. Man, that's getting hot. There's that. And give that a little bit of a stir. So you know it won't be crispy if you like your corned beef hash kind of crispy. Won't be that. No, oh, Carl, you're half an idiot. And all right. So want to see if you can see that it's uh, you know it's a little bit soupier but it's not not too bad looking it was hot not quite burn your mouth hot but hot enough so there you go um, just something uh, my dad taught me to do when I was a little kid. Um, easy enough to uh, to clean up and uh, take care of <clears throat> take care of things afterwards. Bob, I want to thank you for bringing up the discussion and uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, to, to share this with you. Uh, dad, I want to thank you for showing me how to do this. And uh, everybody else, I want to thank you for, for hanging out this morning and watching along. And I would like to say for, uh, for, uh, for all these troubled times we're in right now, for, uh, for everybody to be safe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.